Are you surprised that Tom Brady has ended his retirement? He's coming back to the NFL. And uh, N plus O equals no. Of course not. Of course not. Now, I've got Hasbro, Cape Crusader, and dinner plates. And we're going to co- combine all of these things together, and that will be the foundation of this uh, Mallard monologue, and we can continue our obsession with number 12, Tom Brady. So, uh, A, listen, Tom Brady made a tactical error. He doesn't make many of them. He made a tactical error here. Uh, he got smacked around by the Rams, even though the Bucks came back in the second half. That was a domination at the beginning part of that game. Brady was not ready to play. And prisoner of the moment, prisoner of the moment, that's it. I throw in my sponge. I'm done. And he never wanted to retire in the first place. And we've been sitting here barking into these microphones. We talked about Brady. that He just had the look and the sound of a guy that didn't want to do this, that he was being forced into it. So why did he? The theory is kind of obvious here that Brady was bamboozled, he was hoodwinked, and he was led astray by his bride. Now, we have heard whispers going back to the end of the last couple of years with the Patriots there that Giselle Bundchen no longer on the catwalk anymore, and she has been pestering Brady for years to leave the NFL behind and go back to just being a regular human being and not being in the NFL. And finally, the series of events all lined up, the planets all lined up here, and the walls collapsed under the constant badgering at the house. And so think of it like a family game of of, of Twister. Holy Hasbro! Uh, the, that large, you know, that plastic mat, you know, you put that down on the floor there and you, you kind of reach for the spinner and Brady's like reaching for the sprinter and, and he, he ends up, anyway, he ends up being all tied up in knots and that's what happened. He got tied up in knots. You could tell that he was not into it, the retirement. Based on his own words, based on his own words on the Fugazi podcast that he does with his BFF, Jim Gray. At, it was at the five-week mark he was lamenting having spending spending that much time with his family and his kids and all that. Yet, when he started all this, it was like, oh, I'm going to get so much great time with my family and all that nonsense. But after five weeks, Brady was like, eh, you know, it's, uh, there's other stuff going on. <laughs> Realizing that uh, the children, while they may lo- may, might love you and they love you to death, but they don't want to spend all time with you. They want to do their own thing. I think they got their own stuff going on. And so Brady left the door open publicly, and now he is crashing back through. Forget the door. He's not even going through the door. He's going through the wall like the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brady's got his manhood back. That's what the story is here. That's the headline. Brady gets manhood back. He didn't want to retire. He got talked into it. He got his arm twisted into it. For years, Brady had said consistently the same message. Same message on all those Monday radio appearances in Boston that he wanted to play until he sucked. Well, he didn't suck in 2021. He led the NFL in passing yards, led the NFL in touchdowns, completions, attempts, all of that. And so you keep going. You keep going until the wheels fall off. And they will fall off. They will absolutely fall off. And and then at that point, put your tail between your legs and you go do something else. All right, now part B of this. So Tom Brady in air quotes, retired for 40 days and 40 nights. It always was a Fugazi situation, right? Uh, Brady, now that he's coming back, does he get the kiss-ass retirement tour inquiring minds would like to know? But over the last couple of years, Brady's already been on borrowed time, so he's on more borrowed time. Uh, 40 days was long enough for him, Brady, to muster up enough guts to put his foot down and say, I want my machismo back. And it, it, it's at the point now, why Why now, right? Well, it's kind of like wedding vows. He had to speak now or forever hold his peace because Brady would not have come back if everyone had gone separate directions. Right? He didn't want to be a solo act in Tampa. And with Blaine Gabbert as the de facto quarterback for the Buccaneers, Tampa would have gone from the cool kids club to irrelevancy because all these other players were going to leave as free agency. So what Brady did, it was the night before the start of NFL free agency, Brady went caped crusader to avoid a mass exodus 
of everyone skedaddling, skedaddling out of the Tampa St. Pete area. So he used the Brady signal, not to be confused with the bat signal. This is the Brady signal to summon his teammates. Now, Tom has modified that searchlight, much like Batman did, but he put the TV 12 symbol on that. And he put that on the light, and and there's a projects a large TB12 symbol over the cloudy night skies in the NFL, and he's able to alert his teammates and prospective teammates to hey, I'm I'm back, I'm back. Here's see the TB12, see the the symbol up there. Yeah, that's me. I'm back. And uh, of course, it also is a weapon of uh, psychological intimidation for the other teams around the NFL. They see that TB12 sig- signal, and they start getting the heebie-jeebies. I think, oh, no, he's back. All right, last word here. So Tom Brady, in announcing his return, he said he's got unfinished business. Are you buying that? I'm not buying that. I think that's bull crap. He doesn't have any unfinished business. Brady is the most decorated quarterback in NFL history. Seven Super Bowl wins, universally adored outside, well, in Boston and in Florida, parts of Florida. Uh, But despite that, listen, Tom Brady... Still has an itch he needs to to have scratched, and this is an opportunity. So he's got enough money. He doesn't need money. He's not going to need another, as Rob Manford would say, hunk of metal in that sport. All right? He looks around the NFC. What really, what really is going on right here is Brady looks around the National Football Conference, and his eyes it, it get the size of dinner plates, and he he knows that. It's really a three-horse race at this point, depending on some crazy things that happen between now and the end of the transaction silly season in the NFL. But those eyes, like dinner place, he's looking around. He's like, listen, this is easy peasy here. I can get right back and be in a position. I got a one in three chance of being in the Super Bowl. And then in the Super Bowl, you know, Brady doesn't win them all. He certainly lost this year. He lost to Nick Foles, for God's sakes. But the opportunity is there. And you look around, and with Brady back in Tampa, they're obviously a contender. The Packers and the Rams, that's it. Everyone else is a joke. You got Alligator Arms Murray in Arizona, a fraud of a quarterback. The Dallas Cowboys, please, a farcical operation. The 49ers, they don't know what Trey Lance will be or not. And you look around the NFC South. It is a wasteland of football. Matty Ice, we assume he'll be back because he worked out a contract agreement, but he's, he's washed up. Carolina and New Orleans are the headless horsemen. And some are saying, well, what about Deshaun Watson? Deshaun Watson's a loser. And he's got stank. He'll be suspended even if he comes back. So does it really matter? Uh, I actually hope he goes to New Orleans because that would break the hearts of the Saints fans because <laughs> they think they're, they're getting this big shot quarterback and he's going to go out there and miss – Half the games, and who knows? I mean, uh, we know the the uh, the lawsuits, 22 of them. So if he if he loses, let's say he loses three or four of them, does he get suspended four games for each lawsuit? That'll wipe out the balance of the season. But one thing's for sure, as far as Tom Brady and the Bucks are concerned, the gambling market, very reactionary, knowing that Joe Schmo fan is going to lay a lot of lumber on the Buccaneers to win the Super Bowl with Brady coming back. So Tampa, the gambling market immediately adjusting right away, within seconds. If you had bet on the Buccaneers on Saturday, you would have gotten Tampa 20-1 to to win the Super Bowl. And they went all the way, all the way down to 10-1. to So what that means is that before Tom Brady, the Bucs had about a 5% chance, give or take, of winning the Super Bowl. With Tom Brady, they improve by 5%, so they have a 10% chance of winning the Super Bowl. And uh, if if you said, hey, would you take Tom Brady or the field, I would take the field. I would not bet on Brady. I would bet on the field. I think the, the smart bet would be to do that, but there's a lot of idiots out there. It's like get very sentimental, and like, oh, Brady's back. I can, I can dust off my jersey that's been away for 40 days and bring it back. 